Hey, Josie, it's Anthony Ramos from GLAAD. So good to see you. Hi, so good to see you. Congratulations. Okay, I want to, t- your Lexi, you know, let's talk about Lexi. She is this amazing, interesting character who just happens to be trans. Tell me, and I know that was an important part of that. Why was it important to kind of, you know, make her, you know, make that not the headline for her character? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to be said and in, in why I've said it so often in these interviews is that much of the time when it comes to trans representation, it is told through the lens of trans struggle or portraying trans characters in a negative light. So getting the opportunity to play a character and help develop a character that was so much more than just one part of her, her gender identity that had all these different aspects to her. And not only did her character have different aspects, but her arc throughout the season wasn't banking on her sole gender identity is such an amazing opportunity and so cool. And even the trans people that I've spoken to and I've asked them about are so excited about this. And just having those people in my life be happy about it means everything to me because it's so needed. And I'm so excited that we get to bring it to the forefront. And what I love is is that Lexi's, uh, you know, the fellow students, they, accepts that her that part of her right away. I think, what do, what do you hope? Because I think there's so much potential for families um, and young people, you know, to, to see someone like Lexi for the first time. What do you hope that people take away from, you know, with Lexi's storyline? I hope we normalize acceptance of the trans community in our everyday lives. I think you guys um, over at GLAAD have uh, released the statistic that most people do not know another trans person. I think for so much of my life, I had never met a trans person up until this past year, which is an insane thing because being someone who shares that identity with other people, I had no idea what anyone else's experience was like because I felt so alone because I didn't know anyone because I thought that something might've been wrong with me. So I think representation is so important so we can let people know that they're not alone, that there are people like them and that you can live a healthy, happy, successful life and still be your true self. I love that and couldn't agree more. Did you find that, you know, you were able to kind of educate any of your fellow castmates and just people on set about, you know, what it is to be trans and kind of that whole experience? Yeah, I think getting the opportunity to be a producer on the show allowed me to have a voice and a seat at the table. And I was so grateful that our writers and Tracy Wigfield, our showrunner, were so open to learning and they were open to being wrong. And I think all of those things are so, so important for growth. And without them, we are stagnant uh, people and we can't evolve. Um, So I'm really grateful for that. But of course there are moments um, amongst all of us cast members where we're all checking our, our privileges and our ignorances in different subjects, whether it's race or gender identity and, and so on. Uh, I know that I Am Jazz, the show, was very important to you in your journey. And I know that Lexi kind of has that kind of similar parallel having been on a reality show. Uh, did you and Jazz get to kind of chat at all about that and kind of did, pick her brain a little bit and so you could get into that mindset? You know, it's so funny because Jazz just texted me and she was swiping up on a photo that I I posted on Instagram like a few hours ago. I love her so, so much. And she's such an inspiration to me and such an incredible human being. And I'm so grateful that I have a relationship with her. But I didn't necessarily speak with her about the reality show that we have. It's a much trashier, less (laughs) nuanced version of her show, I would say like, she has the docu-series acclaimed uh, version of it. And we have like the E all access, like <laughs> true Hollywood story vibe going on, yeah. which of course is something that we know and love, but it's definitely not as um, sentimental and deep as, as Jazz's show is. I mean, it still has those elements, of course. It's not like a joke show, but I wouldn't want to disrespect Jazz's show by saying that the way we portray the show is similar to hers. Totally understand. But, you know, thinking about Saved by the Bell, this is one of the most uh, anticipated reboots ever. People are losing their minds. You're you're very young, and I, but how cool is it to be part of this reboot of a show that is literally, you know, a part of, you know, TV history, it's an icon. 
it's so cool because growing up, of course, I was aware of the pop cultural impact of the show, even though I didn't necessarily watch it while it was on due to the fact that um, God had not birthed me <laughs> yet. Um, but it's it's a cool experience. And I think what's even more cool was the conversations that we're having on this version of the show. We're not just bringing it back and doing a reboot. It's a continuation and we're having these topical, important dialogues that I think people will really, really appreciate. Well, uh, we could not be more happy for you. Congratulations. Uh, good luck with everything. Can't wait to see the rest of the season. And uh, I'll talk to you very soon, hopefully in person again. Yes, I know. Thank you so much. I miss you. And uh, your you. home looks beautiful. And I'm jealous that I don't live in it. <laughs> oh, thank you. And tell your cute family I said hi to. I will. I'll tell them. All right. All right, bye, thank you.